And uh, we're trying to figure out the best lighting situation. Sorry for the uh, overwash on the slides, but the floods are necessary for streaming, so we're going to try to figure out how slides. Does that work? This one. Uh, so, okay. Perfect. It's okay. It's okay. Right here. Um, hi, my name is Mitar. Um, I'm a PhD student at UC Berkeley, uh, and I'm working on a project called Peer Library. Uh, just to give us some a bit of context, what I will be talking, I will just present a few ideas about it. So it's online platform uh, and a community uh, to facilitate the global conversations on academic literature. The idea is very simple: a nice interface where you can search uh, academic literature, uh, you find the results, and then you can annotate that, discuss that with others, and so on. And that's my research question of my research is uh, okay, and that's where it's available. So a question of my research is how to build nice user interfaces around collaboration, around reading. Uh, that's what my PhD is about. Um, so when I started this project, it seems easy, you know, build interfaces. That's what I'm doing, you know, computer science. I know how to program and so on. But sadly, uh, the main issues were not there. The main issues were how to build that because. Uh, where is metadata? Where I know what exists there, which books are there, which publications are there, which academic papers are there, and so on. Uh, where is content that I could integrate into my system so that people could use it, uh, people could, uh, you know, interact, and so on. Uh, and how to do this legally? How to do this in a way that it would, uh, publisher would like it, users will like it, um, that um, uh, it will work. Um, if I generalize very grossly now, is my feeling what is happening currently in, in the web is you have three things. You have, we're digitizing books and putting them into archives, digital archives, which don't have any interaction around that. Uh, we have publishers who are moving into online and selling that. And we have readers and creators of content who embrace the web and bypass publishers and use the web directly uh, and publish on blogs and other um, platforms. Um, and that's why the, you know, our artifacts, books, and everything else is different from the web. It's not linked. We have separate um, communities. Um, and that brings lack of diversity. So if you imagine, if, if you look at the web, how diverse it is, how many different tools we have to consume and create content, how many different pipelines we have of, of uh, you know, producers, um, editors, and everybody else, uh, but that, if you look at the books and, and other things on online, it's still traditional, it's lack of diversity, it's very few systems. Um, in real world, it's not like that. In real world, people had innov innovated about, around books. We created public libraries. This is innovation. It was not before. It happened, somebody got an idea and do it. We have reading clubs. We have lending among friends. You have a book. Hey, I can give this book to somebody. Uh, we can leave the book on the bench in a park. How can we do anything like this on the web? Can we do it? Who can do it? What are the rules to do it? Um, for example, if we just take the public libraries as an example, public libraries are not just more than just archives. They're also public space. They have uh, interactions when you get there. You can talk with others, you can learn from others, you can organize reading clubs there, for example. How can we bring these things online? What is necessary to bring th these things online? And why we cannot do it? Um, yeah, how to do that? So for example, if I look at my library website at Berkeley, that's how it looks. Are there any social interactions here? You can search, find results, and that's the result. How can I find other people interested in this book? How can I talk with them? How can I see them browsing the bookshelf with me? Um, but we do have a lot of online driven communities. We, we, all know, we know all of them. We know them. 
Facebook, Twitter, web itself. Um, how, why we cannot bridge these two things together? Why we have still just digitized versions of all things without really have communities and, and all those things we have on the web? So why we cannot click uh, with one click, share, like, poke, whatever we do with <laughs> online things, why we cannot do this with books? Who is, you know, who, where is the gap? And, and this lack of diversity is bad. It's bad for everyone. It's bad for users, it's bad for publishers, it's bad for everybody. Um, because it's not just about a book. It's not that we have a book which is entity. It is about social interactions around the book. That's what made books so popular. Why, why, why we are reading them? We can discuss them, we can share them, we can bring them around. How can we bring this to the web? Um, and this happens everywhere in the physical world, in schools, in libraries, among friends, in a bar. Books can be anywhere. You can find them anywhere. You can w use them anywhere, except on the web. Um, so how many social interactions you know or use around the digital books? You can buy them. You can read them on your computer. Some, maybe sometimes comp you can comment, and that's it. Uh, that's one social interaction you are familiar maybe with. You want to buy them, you get paywalls. So you're even prevented from social interactions with things you want to do. Uh, so, and, and yeah, and, and you have to decide based on so, some sh sh uh, short snippet, uh, you know, do you want to buy that and so on. In, in the real world, you can ask friends, you can be offered the book, to see it, to listen to the whole book, and so on. Um, is this really the best we can do? Um, how can we innovate and try new models? What is this that in the physical world allows us to try new things, to try a library in a house and see how people came and take it, to, to build a small library and put it in the garden, to leave a bookshelf out on the park? How can we do this on the web? So currently how it seems is that publishers try to build all these things. They make some platforms and so on. But that's not their role. Their role is not to be facilitators of all these interactions. They cannot imagine on themselves how to do all these things. They cannot even develop all these things. Um, and we have people who can do it themselves. We can people who can imagine things we cannot imagine. That's the beauty of diversity, beauty of human race, I would say. Um, so, and that's what, what's missing. How to allow, enable uh, people to find these new ways. Uh, how can they find them, like them, how can they poke them? Uh, and what is missing is APIs. That's what is on the web. Before we talked about standards. What we're missing here is APIs. That's what publishers don't provide, don't want to provide. Uh, and that's why we cannot build around that. I'm like innovator, I'm programmer. I would like to build upon that. If I want to build on Twitter and Facebook, they provide me API and I can play with that. There are many differences for a developer as me. I can go to Facebook or Twitter, I can register an app, start using API and build something tomorrow. If I tr try to do this to today with publisher, I will spend probably six months at least negotiating the terms, co uh, contracts and so on, and that even before I even have a company to start. How can I do this with publisher? with every publisher on the world. I cannot, because I don't even have a company. I have just an idea what would I like try to, do, to, to try, but I cannot do anything. And then we, none of us can learn, is this idea good, and then try to maybe put it on market and so on. Um, so how can we try new things if it's so hard to even start? And the web allowed that. A web allowed easy start. You can make a website easily. How can we do this around books? So we should be publisher as a platform. That should be the solution. Publisher should provide platforms to build upon. Um, a, uh, they should provide the APIs to access the content for free for developers and under conditions. Anybody, that, that's already done. You can get similar things for Twitter and Facebook. They give you strict conditions how you can use the data. But if you agree to them, you can start using it today. Um, so that, and the idea is, these APIs would then allow many new things. Search services, recommendation services, discussion platforms, classrooms, mobile apps, digital leaders, cross-linking, cross-referencing, everything. 
people will be able to start trying to map interactions we are familiar with from physical world to online world. Currently, that's not possible. And of course, once you have all that, people will also try to do new business models. They will start, try to be, create new market apps and sell this content for publisher have for them with new ideas how to approach that. Instead of asking publishers to get with new business models, people will do it for you because they want to also for their service, which is built upon the content for publishers, to thrive. That Amazon did. This is that what Amazon did. Do we really want that Amazon is the only one who is selling the books? They did this model. They went innovate on the web and arranged all the uh, arrangements with publishers. How can we get small people to do that the same? Again, it's not about the book, it's around social interactions around the book. If we manage to map those social interactions to the web, then we will succeed as a community, as everybody, from readers, creators, publishers. Thank you.